All right, everybody, Class Cancels is back. Right now, we're at the Myers School of Art, located in Folk Hall at the University of Akron. They have a variety of different programs to offer, including printmaking, metal smithing, ceramics, photography, and so much, so much more. So let's go see what they have to offer. <laughs> let's go. So now we're here in the metal smithing department here at Myers School of Art. Uh, right now I'm here with Sherry here and she's going to be teaching me some simple demonstrations when it comes to working with metal. So what are, exactly are we going to be working with today? So we're going to start and I thought I'd show you a couple processes for putting texture on metal. Awesome. And one of the easiest ways, while there's a variety of ways of texturing metal, one of the easiest is just to do it with a hammer. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, you know, the metals that we work with here in the, the studio are we typically will work with copper, brass, and sometimes silver, though it's a little bit more more expensive. So I have a couple of sheets of, um, of copper and um, we're going to be using forming hammers and for different hammers uh, produce different textures. Mm -hmm. So something like this called a cross pin is going to give more of sort of a hatched line. Okay. Um, something more rounded is going to give you more of sort of a dimpled effect or something called a planish. We can also actually get quite a bit of texture from just a flat hammer. Okay. And so anyways I have a variety of hammers I just thought I'd show you. So. When working with a hammer, oftentimes a lot of people want to use a hammer up here, mm -hmm. but a hammer is designed so that the weight of the hammer will bounce in your hand. Okay. So I'm going to try to hold the hammer as far down as I can, and I'm actually going to let the hammer do the work. Okay. I'm always going to hammer on steel, and so it's a little bit loud, but by using this kind of, again, a straight hammer, I'm gonna, it's going to produce a series of lines. If I choose to use, again, one round, mm -hmm. a bunch, kind of a dip of effect. And depending on the size of the bottom of the hammer, it produces different size marks. So why don't you give it a try? Okay. I'm gonna try, I wanna try this one first because this one looks cool to me. Um, oh wait, I'm holding, Again, I'm doing down, exactly so, what yeah, you told so me not the hammer to do. Does the work. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Is there like a specific way like, you could like aim? like? So Maybe yeah, you, you are just, you're doing fine. It, it takes a little bit of getting used yeah. to, and also the steel, like it wants to bounce back mm -hmm. up, just naturally what the, the hammer will do. So, you know, you can cross over them. Also, as you hammer metal, it'll start to get hard. Mm -hmm. And so the more you hammer it, the harder it gets. Oh, but okay. that's why, I mean, what we do to soften it up is we'll heat it up with a torch, and I'll show you that in a few minutes if you awesome. like. Yeah, so so hammer great. away. With the metal smithing, that is a major here it is, at yes. Myers. So, so oh. it's actually a jewelry, it, it's actually classified as a jewelry and metal smithing emphasis okay. in, as part of the BFA, or the Bachelor of Fine Arts. Oh, okay. So where can students, like after they graduate, what can they do with a major in metal smithing and jewelry making? So actually, it's, it, I feel like it's probably one of the more diverse um, degrees in the art department. Mm -hmm. So I have had previous students, I've had open up their own jewelry business and they'll mm -hmm. do contemporary art jewelry. They'll, you know, I have a student who was a watchmaker and he actually, <laughs> this past year, his name was Alex Draven. His last year was actually on Jewelry Week in New, in, for Fashion Week in New York. That's awesome. Um, I have quite a few students who will go and work for like Sterling Industries, mm -hmm. um, you know, like J.B. Robinson, do both, you know, they'll, they'll do both like custom work, but, but also like sort of manufacturing. A lot of students will go, go on to graduate school and teach. So students work with metal, but they have acquire all these hand skills that also allow them to work with um, wood and plastic and a variety of other materials. So it's a pretty diverse field. I, I wouldn't expect like working with metal, you'd also be able to like work in uh, things that require like wood and stuff like that. So yeah, awesome. you know what? I actually feel like if you can learn to make things in metal, you can actually make anything. Really? So yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's been my philosophy. <laughs> All right, so, so we go okay, so, ahead and textured that metal and you said we were going to be working with Yeah, so heat now metal. it's really hard. Okay. So like, you know, what happens is when you hit the metal, it 
Like if we looked at it underneath a, a microscope, mm -hmm. it will have disseminated all the like atoms in the metal. Mm -hmm. And so what we can do is we can heat it up and it can create real re like recreate the structure. Okay. So it'll you know like I said it's hard now. We can't we can try bending that now. Oh like, yeah, that's definitely that it's is? very hard now. Okay, so let's go over here. So again, this is like a gas and an air torch, mm -hmm. and we use um, something called a striker to strike. Strike. Oh, okay. This, okay. So I'm gonna actually. So I'm gonna let you see, see if you can get a strike. Get it to strike. Oh, good. So I'm gonna turn my gas on first. Okay. Strike. No, I won't be able to do it. Yeah, let me try. Okay. So we're gonna turn the gas on. Right. Oh, you know what? Okay, the gas is on. I'm turn the gas on. Strike. Oh wow. If we need to, we can also turn the lights out because actually it might be a little bit more dramatic with the lights out. So anyways, we've got the torch on. So I've got I turn up my gas mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna turn up my air and I'm gonna adjust it so that it, I have kind of this sort of cone. Okay. And actually the hottest part of my flame is here. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna touch down on the metal and you're gonna work it around. Okay. So you're gonna be moving the metal all the way around. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep doing this until the metal turns sort of a cherry red. Okay. okay. So we're about out. Isn't that cool how red yeah. that turns? Yeah. I wasn't able to see that before. Yep. So yeah, you're not that's what that's what's really nice about turning off the the lights so you can actually really see that. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're we gonna go ahead and turn this off now. Yep, Is it so, ready? Yeah, righty tight. So you're gonna okay. go your your um, your gas your air first to the right. Okay. And then to your your gas. So yeah, the other way. way. There you go. I'm learning. And so you can right now you can still see it. It's mm -hmm. really really hot and it's just starting to fade. Mm -hmm. Then by the time students get into their advanced level they get to choose the direction they're going. So actually, you know, we can talk to a couple of my advanced students who, um, but at, at the point when they get to advance, sometimes they're not even using metal. She's worked for four or five years, actually four years? Five years. Five years. Five years. So <laughs> towards this degree, and now it, she has um, selected sort of a, a direction she wants to move her work in. Mm -hmm. And so she's, I'll let her tell you what she's doing, but okay. she, as I said, you know, not every student works with metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely started this program only working in metal and doing very traditional processes, mm -hmm. but I um, kind of took inspiration from a time in my life where I lived in Ghana, West oh, Africa. And so now I'm using more traditional African techniques in my work. Mm -hmm. and materials, textiles, I've been using a lot of fabric, um, hand dyed fabric, and oh, wow. then this embroidery floss. Um, Do you mind? No, go ahead. Awesome. So it's fun, so cool. it's soft. And also you asked me earlier some of the different um, um, like avenues that someone could mm -hmm. pursue as far as a career. Alex actually has been working in the metals, uh, like in the, the fabrication industry. Yeah, correct? I've been and a jeweler for a couple years Really? Now, wow. So. Yeah, That's working awesome. on like, you know, engagement rings and chains and all that kind of stuff that you see in a jewelry store. Oh, that's so, really cool. Getting a little bit of everything. Awesome that you were able to find a job in college and yeah. instead of worrying about what you're doing after, after right. college. That's it's definitely cool. a good fallback. So. so why did you originally choose to do this as a major? Um, actually, I came into Akron as an art ed major, mm -hmm. and I still am an art ed major. I just oh, okay. added metals on oh, um, okay. because I took a class. I was supposed to take ceramics, and it <laughs> filled up, and they put me in here instead, luckily, <laughs> and I loved it. So, yeah, That's I've so been here cool. ever since. Alex will debut her BFA at Project 3 Gallery in Kenmore in April. She's a strong example of some of the talent and opportunity available at Myers. All right, so now we're here in the printmaking studio, and I am here with... Carly Zimmerman. It's my senior year. It's my fifth year printmaking, double majoring in printmaking, and art education with a minor in painting. Printmaking is kind of like, yeah, so you can be like a graphic designer, a sculptor, photographer, painter, drawler, like any kind of medium mm -hmm. that you like, you can incorporate that into printmaking. They're doing a process over here called Intaglio. Mm -hmm. So they actually like have a copper plate. They put what they want on it and then they dip it into acid. The acid will eat away the copper and basically everywhere that the acid ate away, you can ink it up and like create multiple prints through that process. 
So what exactly are you going to be showing us today? And are you going to be giving us a little demonstration? Um, we could actually probably go over to the visiting artists we have today and see what they're doing okay. with Intaglio. So there's like different kinds of methods within Intaglio. Oh, okay. So like in Intaglio is just kind of like an umbrella for all the different processes underneath it. Got it. All right. Well, I'm really excited. So let's go over and do that. All right, so now we're here doing a demonstration with some printmaking, and I'm here with... Uh, Jared Faust. I'm a senior and junior, sort of, at the, yeah, the Meyer School of Art, basically. I'm a printmaker and painter as well. Um, today we're printing up uh, the intaglio plates, which you can see here. Um, so basically, intaglio is the idea that you basically put ink onto the plate, and then you would wipe away the top of the plate. Um, basically, it's the opposite of relief, so that would be but um, you would ink up just the top with like a brayer essentially and then print it that way. But since we're doing intaglio, we're going to move on to this plate. Um, we have to wet our paper down and then soak it and put it on top of the plate to print it. And that's basically the intaglio process. So the paper, typically we keep it wet, but this stuff, since it's so thin, it's a Japanese type of paper called, I think, gampe. Um, so that, if we wet it, it would like fall apart, essentially. So if you guys follow me, I'll try and go onto this side. So basically, I just want to cover the entire piece of paper with the copper plate, uh, leave a little bit on the top and bottom, and then I will grab what paper we have from here. So this is just basically keeping it wet. That's all that it really does. You just grab two sheets, and then we stick it on top. So I want to center it basically, and then drop it from there. And it's okay if it's offset or whatever. Mm -hmm. But from there, we can go ahead and print. So with intaglio, since the ink is down into the grooves, uh, we basically have to use as much pressure as we can. Do you know how much pressure this thing puts out? Uh, I don't know the exact down? number <laughs> right now. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. Okay. Yeah. So I will bring up the plate. Oh, that's really cool. You can see this is what the visiting artist does. Yeah. So the, her process, she's used a bunch of like, um, she basically puts acid directly onto the plate rather than um, like putting it in a bath, sort of. Mm -hmm. But that's it, basically. That's what we're doing down here. Well, thank you so much for showing us yeah. the, the little demo. And uh, I'll let you get back to work. But thank th you. again, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Printmaking and metalsmithing are just two of the fields of study available at Full Call. The Myers School of Art also offers programs in ceramics, graphic design, painting, drawing, photography, and sculpture. Come down and check out some of the many student galleries when you get a chance. Until then, follow us at Class Cancelled on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we'll see you next time when class is cancelled. <laughs>